And yet they don't have anything. Constantly, the world is kicking them and pushing them down. Constantly. Their whole life is nothing but strife and struggle. What about them? Morning, everybody. Welcome to Counter Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we're going to get jiggy with it. Does that sound good? Coming right up. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Or afternoon or evening, whatever you're watching this. We're going to be talking about Will Smith. And I know it's Wednesday, and you're like, dude, that was like three days ago. What's wrong with you? Um, and you know, there's a lot of things wrong with me. Thanks for asking. But first of all, I don't do shows usually on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, and secondly, I just, you know, this is when I'm doing it. So, you know, thanks for clicking. I appreciate it. But if you didn't already know or see, you probably have, I mean, it's had like 4 million memes and a million more people per hour talking about it. Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. Yes, the Will Smith. And yes, the Chris Rock slapped. Um, He was slapped at the Oscars. Now, yeah, the Oscars were on Sunday. Um, Go figure. I I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that either. Don't feel bad. But he was up for uh, best actor. Keep this in mind. And there's a million, you've already probably watched, you know, 10 videos and commentaries and people. So hopefully, there's still something new here and something fresh. I don't want to focus too much on the slap, so don't click away just yet. We're not going to look at the slap too much. It's just a symptom. It's a massive symptom of the overall problem. But the slap is, because it's a symptom, it's something that we have to at least look at and understand a little bit better, especially as Christians wanting to be against the world but for it and have discernment. And, and use use the knowledge that the Lord has given you and not just gobble up everything that something like Hollywood gives. I'm not even going to play it. I've listened to it so many times. There's some cursing in it. So you can go watch the full thing if you want. Uh, Chris Rock, he pokes fun at Javier Bardem. And then he moves over to Will and Jada. Now, Jada Smith, uh, Pinkett Smith, has a shaved head. Now, this is very fashionable, right? Women have done this for years. Um and Chris Rock pokes fun at her. G.I. Jane, can't wait to see it. You know, you can see she rolls her eyes and it cuts away and Will laughs. He's laughing. And then all of a sudden, he gets up on stage and he slaps Chris Rock. Okay. There's a couple things that why I think this is not totally genuine. <laughs> uh, not like it really matters. But first of all, the, the fashion statement of shaving your head and women talking about it and it looks great. And now the white Bible does talk about, especially in Corinthians 11, how hair is a glory. And when you shave your head, it's, 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 it's not good. And yet we have this complete cultural uh, subversion and upside down nature. Now, of course she's got a, a disease an illness. Okay. Did Chris Rock know that? I don't know if he did. That's, that's pretty jerky. Like, let's be real here. That's, 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 you're being a jerk, dude. If he didn't, though, although Jada's talked about it a couple times, apparently, the last few years, then it's fair game, right? New York Times uh, quotes, Will Smith's slap has already been launched a thousand attacks. A thousand takes, excuse me. On Sunday evening, the Academy Awards struck. Okay, great, great. Uh, he says at his acceptance speech later in the evening when Smith won the Oscar, he apologized on stage saying, love will make you do crazy things, quote, unquote. Well, but see, ah, love is patient and kind, though, right? It's not gentle. It's not harsh. It's not unbecoming, right? And a bunch of other things that aren't emotions. What Will Smith did, and again, you've seen it, so I'm not going to put it in here, and I don't want to fool with beeping the cursing and nonsense out. Chris is standing there. Now, there's a reason why I don't think this is completely genuine. Will Smith gets up on stage. Nobody stops him. Nobody says anything. Nobody kind of gets in his way. Who knows what? And obviously, this is a bunch of snobby millionaires trying to lecture us about, you know, real life. But Chris Rock is square. Now, of course, he's standing square. But if he wasn't anticipating that and you get slapped, you're going you're gonna to stumble. He doesn't move his feet. Watch it if you haven't already noticed that. Other things 
one major thing is the Academy Awards, and I don't know, I don't even have bothered to look, uh, but the ratings have been going down for years. Nobody cares. Really, nobody cares. But now we care. And I know I'm talking about it, feeding the, the machine, aren't I? The monster. But most of the time, people don't care. Why don't they care? Well, because we're sick and tired of celebrities telling us to buy an electric car, to curse Bush, to curse Trump, to do this, to vote Obama, to kill your baby, to whatever. We're tired of it because the average person doesn't think like that. Trust me, the average person, you don't think like that. It's okay. If you think you're on the quote unquote wrong side of history because the news keeps telling you you are, you're probably not. Hollywood is irrelevant or almost irrelevant. But right now, what are we doing? We're talking about it. And we've had a million videos, probably a million. Like I wouldn't even doubt. In a few days of talking about this one event, you better believe there's going to be people tuning in to the Golden Globes, which is, you know, Oscars Jr. And the Oscars themselves, the Grammys, all the award shows. See what's going to happen for the next, the rest of this year and into next year. Probably be the years to come. Remember Ricky Gervais two years ago, totally trashing all the celebrities about all their sexual immorality, crazy debauchery and pride and arrogance and all that stuff. Yeah. And people, I guarantee you watched uh, this episode, or rather this show because of something like that. The slap is a bigger indication of the cultural rot that we see in our society. It's on full display. It really is. And he did apologize on Monday. Violence in all its forms is poisonous and destructive. My behavior last night at the Academy Awards was unacceptable and inexcusable. Jokes at my expense are part of the job. But a joke about Jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear, and I reacted emotionally. I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. I was out of line, and I was wrong. I am embarrassed, and my actions were not indicative of the man I want to be. There is a no place for violence in a world of love and kindness. I really want to focus on one thing, and uh, there's a video from Reformed Wiki 2.0, uh, and he clipped it together, that channel clipped it together, Will Smith talking about the movie. Now, the movie he was up for was King Richard, uh, kind of a weird name, but Richard Williams, who's the dad of Serena and Venus, or Venus and Serena, uh, I think Venus is older. Anyway. You know, so this is like the 80s and the 90s growing up. And I remember when those, I mean, they're about my age. This video where Will Smith's talking about it, I clipped it together and I edited it a little bit. But you can find the full video. You've probably already seen it. But let's look at this. And we're going to talk a little bit more. You can't get where I get if you don't love the Lord. Because I'm like, man, you are more spiritual than a lot of both. I'm, I call you the bishop. Oh, no, I call you Master Smith because you have ministered to me and so many people. Will Smith recently starred in King Richard as the father of tennis stars Venus and Serena Williams. I wrote me a 78-page plan for their whole career before they was even born. The movie Guide describes King Richard as having a strong Christian, moral, pro-family worldview with positive messages of Christian faith virtue and character okay so right there we can see that that's cool you know it's a it's a christian movie right now maybe they do i don't know i've not seen the movie i might see it actually and let's be real here i like will smith i really do there's a lot of actors that i don't like although my my appreciation for him is waning significantly because people even like you know the matt damons and the ben afflecks from 15 years ago uh, or more just being like raging liberal, which is like, it just drips from every word that they say. It's like, golly, can you just shut up about politics and be the little court gesture and entertain us, please? That's your job. Okay. I don't care what you think about the war in Iraq. I don't care what you think about president Bush or how, you know, Al Gore lost the election to Bush and, you know, stolen, you know, it was 20 years ago, 22 years ago. I don't care, you know, uh, blah, blah, all the nonsense. I'm tired of it. And the average American's tired of it. Even if you're a Democrat, I'm sure you're still tired of it. At why we're here. At least why Will Smith is here, but also the culture in general. So this says here, oh, it's a Christian movie. Cool, great. They're Jehovah's Witnesses. So that's not, that's already deceptive right there. No, I don't trust that movie site at all. I don't even know it. But they're actually Jehovah's Witnesses. They're not Christian. Jehovah's Witnesses aren't Christian. Newsflash, they're not Christian. They wouldn't even say they're Christian either. Uh, generally. And so it's kind of 
yeah now it might be moral and pro-family okay but it's certainly not strong christian especially terrible anyway back to this from reformed wiki in an interview with devin franklin smith discussed his faith in god the number one question they were like yo is, is will a man of faith does he love the lord i'm like yes okay so what i want to tell i want you to hear you from the you can, mouth. You, are you a man of faith you can't you get, love the lord you can't get where i get if you don't love the lord exactly. you don't you don't get to sit how i sit and move how i move if you right. don't love the lord exactly yeah okay. you know you, you'd be seeing a whole lot of other repercussions <laughs> <laughs> got it okay yeah. good good man. all right so that yeah. we got that out the way exactly. okay so that sounds great, doesn't it? Like, well, yeah, I'm getting blessed because the Lord's blessing me. Obviously, I'm famous because I love the Lord. Upon further examination, contra, you know, being against that, but for it, right? Being against that idea, but for it, being against will, but for will, being against Jada, but for Jada. I'm not going to watch this, but you are, whoever you are. Thanks for watching, by the way. Please like and subscribe if you have not. I'm trying to get to 500 subs. Uh, so I can actually open up that little community tab and we can communicate. What about Bill Gates? Right? What about the Shahs of Iran or Saudi Arabia? What about Vladimir Putin or Xi Jinping? What about some of these people who are like, even more wealthy than Will Smith. And Will Smith has a lot of money. I don't know how much. It doesn't really matter. He has a lot of money. He's famous. They don't love the Lord, these other people. Where does that work? And what about, even better question, your grandma, who had the worst life. Just the worst life. Right? Lived in a tiny house, small studio apartment, suffered with illness all her life. Or your sister. Or your friend. Or your child never really grew very tall always had a weight problem always had to go to the doctor always this always this but they love the lord they're faithful in reading they're faithful in proclaiming the the good news to other people they run into they're 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 praying they're talking about god and the lord jesus christ in such a personal tangible way and yet they don't have anything Constantly, the world is kicking them and pushing them down. Constantly. Their whole life is nothing but strife and struggle. What about them? They love the Lord. So right here, this, and he kind of goes into the law of attraction. You'll see that in the full video if you click on it. After my video. Back to this. Smith says that he loves the Lord and is a man of faith. At the same time, though... Smith is very open about his view of marriage as not being an exclusive union between one man and one woman. We agreed that she had to make herself happy and I had to make myself happy. And then we were going to present ourselves back to the relationship. We ride together. We, we got together. together. Bad, Bad marriage for life. <laughs> so I did a video a couple months ago on Will Smith and Jada and their open marriage. Now that's a fancy word for uh, polyandry. Polygamy, it's not really polygamy, because polygamy is one man with multiple wives or one wife with multiple husbands. Um, polyamory is multiple marriages or just coupling with other people. You know, A and B are together, and C and D are together, and E and F are together, and then A and E go together, and B and F go together, and so on. The fact that this is public and has been public for a little while shows that this has been going on for much longer than that. Kind of like when you get caught, I remember the famous like Bill Clinton, you know, Monica Lewinsky from a long time ago and others, scandals. If you get caught lying, you've been lying for a long time. Remember that. If you didn't know that, know that. That's, that's what happens. You know, people who lie and choose to lie, most of the time, they've been lying for quite some time. They've been wandering in immorality and debauchery and all sorts of other things. This is what they've been doing. Will Smith has been doing this and Jada for a long time. They just came out with it because the society is now so coursed uh, and just rough that it just, they, they don't care. I'm not talking about this as much. I'm not talking about this because they're celebrities. I'm talking about this because he says he's a Christian. He's not a Christian. He's just not. Not only because you can't tell at all from his outward appearance and just in general when he's talking about things. Now they were saying, oh, does he love the Lord? He loves the Lord. Of course, you know, I love the Lord. But they have an open marriage. And 
there's all sorts of other just sexual deviancy that has been going on, hinted at, that I'm not even going to get into. But the slap of him barking at Chris, keep your wife's, my wife's name out your mouth, out your bleeping mouth, and he says it twice and he yells it. This is where I think probably the whole situation, by the way, with the slap was probably real to a degree. Probably he was supposed to make fun of him, her, and then Will was going to come up and then probably do something different. Probably. I don't know. It, it's really hard to tell. But I'm very skeptical of Hollywood. I'm very skeptical of a lot of things because people are deceivers. People lie. People trick. And let's be real here. These Now we're talking about it. Millions of people are talking about this. A show that's completely, almost completely irrelevant. But Ephesians 5 and Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 13, is just also very classic passages. But let's just stick in these uh, Proverbs because, again, the Proverbs are quite helpful. Great verse, especially, I commend it to you, especially young men, uh, especially if you're struggling with um, immoral, impure thoughts, struggling with pornography, uh, all sorts of things. It is, I mean, it right off the bat, starts with, My son, be attentive to wisdom, incline your ear to my understanding. So this is Solomon talking to his sons. That you keep discretion, and your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. Now that's going to trigger somebody right off the bat. Probably nobody that watches this. You guys are all very even keel, and I appreciate it. But maybe you're a new person and you're watching. This is God's word, though. So if you're triggered, you're triggered with God. So go to God and talk to him about it. Don't get mad at me. Just the messenger. But in the end, she's as bitter as warm and sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold of shield. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways are unstable and she does not know it. So, oh, how dare you condemn women. This is husband, uh, a, a father talking to his son. So shut up. It could be likewise said, a wife or a mother talking to her daughters, but this is how it's written. And quite frankly, most men struggle with immorality more than women. The skin, we love the skin, right? More skin, the better, our flesh says. And so we have to battle against that, especially when you're not married or if you're married to one woman, you need to, what does it say? Drink water from your own cistern and fresh water from your own well or flowing water from your own well. That's a different translation. Should, should your springs be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the streets, let them be yours and yours alone. Let the fountain of your wife, fountain be blessed. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. Loving, dear, and a graceful doe. Let her breasts, oh, breasts, oh, yeah, yeah, sex is good. God made it. But between a man and a woman in covenant marriage, nothing else. Let her breasts fill you or satisfy you. I like that's NASB, satisfy. At all times, be intoxicated always in her love. Have fun in the bedroom, married couples. That's good, that's good. Satan will tell you, oh, that's bad and dirty. And meanwhile, hide your pornography use, hide your immorality, hide your looks. You're like, man, I wish I could had her. I wish her. Oh, she's at the office. She's this. No, kill that sin and rejoice in the wife of your youth. Be intoxicated with a forbidden woman. Embrace the bosom of an adulteress. For he dies for lack of discipline. The fruit of his personal life is outflowing. And you can go check out that video. I'll probably be at the end of this as well. More and more showing that you open your door and you rejoice in someone else. It's a massive problem. Massive, massive problem. Here's this here. Let's, this is what I wanted to look at. Education and, and expansion. She is a, a scholar and a friend, and this is her first book. And I cannot wait. Uh, it's called The Wild Woman's Way. Uh, I just got it. It's uh, Michaela Baum. She is the truth. What she was doing was essentially cleaning out my mind. Okay. Did you hear what he just said? She is the truth. Wow. That almost sounds like John 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to me except for the Father comes to the father except through me and i be they're all about the same but this woman apparently is the truth letting it know it was okay to be me and be who i was it was okay to think hallie is fine it doesn't make me a bad person that i'm married and i think hallie is beautiful whereas in my mind in my christian upbringing even my thoughts were sins that was really the problem out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks 
right? Out of the overflow of the heart, the body acts. And taking every thought captive under Christ, Colossians tells us. Why should we take thoughts captive if they're not that big of a deal? If Michaela here is, you know, onto something, some new age fangled whatever, all of a sudden, oh, I've got it. Just give in to your sin. Tell your sin that it's not really sin. Tell yourself it's not really sin. Oh, okay. I mean, this, ladies and gentlemen, this this isn't new. Of course, he's talking about Hallie, Hallie Berry, famous, very attractive lady. Can I say she's beautiful? Yeah, sure, I can say she's beautiful. She is beautiful. God made beauty. He made aesthetics. There's a certain tangibleness to what is beautiful. Some of it's cultural, I understand. Some of it's um, relational and some, you know, certain things like that. But there's certain things that like we look at a sunset and you might be thinking, ah, okay, why do you look at a sunset and say, wow, that's, that's beautiful. And you look at that, but you don't look at the little, you know, droppings from your dog in your lawn and say, wow, that's beautiful. No one does that. If you do get help, that's disgusting. Don't do that. Or a baby diaper, right? <laughs> Let's be real here. Again, this is the channel where we're real, but no, I, I don't want to be crass or, or rude, but life is real. Life is gross. Life is real right whereas in my mind my christian upbringing so he doesn't even say my faith so this woman's the truth no christian is going to say this person's the truth this person has truth maybe sure but the truth give me a rig no will smith's not a christian he's just not and you know even my thoughts were sins yeah they are <laughs> they are I mean, there's, there's countless passages that talk about that. Countless passages to guard our minds. Mind. Let's see here. Well, here's one. This is just off the cuff. Romans 8, 6. The mind governed by the flesh is death. Like, I don't... How can you... <laughs> like, the Bible's so clear. It's so cogent. It's so concise. The Bible set... The, the mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Will Smith doesn't have life and peace. Says that Michaela worked me through to let me realize that my thoughts were not sins. And even acting upon an impure thought didn't make me a piece of blank. Also, Smith said, You can't get where I get if you don't love the Lord. Exactly. You, don't, you don't get to sit how I sit and move how I move if you right. don't love the Lord. There's more. And I'll, I'll link this. <clears throat> I don't want to go too long on this. Um... He's reaping what he's sown. Will Smith did not defend Jada. Okay. Oh, you know, you get the leftist. Oh, she's she's being defended. Well, first of all, the left has no idea what a woman is. And therefore, toxic masculinity would be defending a woman. Women don't need to be defended. Why didn't Jada go up there and punch him in the face or slap him? Should have done that. But we still have the structure creation, creation order, right? Men are stronger. That's just what it is. It's not an insult. That's just what it is. Men defend women. Men go to war. Men go be police officers. Men go do this. Men go do dangerous things. Why? Because that's how God has made them. And so many people, you might even think, you know, my words even coming out of my mouth, like it's kind of like sandpapery on my soul because I've been so washed in second and third wave feminism and just the lies of the ideology. We've been lied to routinely for decades, really thousands of years, but when you continue to push down the word and you continue to insult and ridicule and then fine and then mess with, I mean, it's calculated. Why? They want us to leave with our passions, right? They want us, whoever they are, it doesn't matter, but there's, there's a they, want us to run with, uh, and just, and, uh, and not actually think, not be slow to speak right? Quick to hear and slow to speak. No, Twitter, social media, you might even be dropping a comment right now and thinking, oh, this guy's an idiot. Maybe, maybe not. That's fine. You can have that opinion. But know that that's, make that opinion while before, think before you make that opinion. Proverbs 31 is, of course, the classic passage for wives. I want to go to Proverbs 12, 6 real quick, and we'll finish up with this. There's just, 
Will is not defending Jada. Why? Well, because he's not defending her in the bedroom. He's not rejoicing in the wife of his youth. Rather, he's rejoicing in Halle Berry, and she's rejoicing in other men. Now, there's other rumors and stuff and people that she's even been with, her friends, her son's friends. Gross, ick, nasty, everything, yes, and you could say that because it is. Because these aren't really sins, Will Smith says. And this woman goes on to, quote unquote, tell him that it's not that big of a deal. That your sin isn't that big of a deal, really. Proverbs 12, 6. The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but speech of the upright recuses them. So, again, talking about words or violence, blah, blah, blah. Again, massive overreaction by Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. It just is. But because he's now shouting, get my wife's name out your mouth, right? And he does it twice. Nobody, we're security. Like, again, I think some of this is staged. But you can also tell how Chris Rock kind of responds that it wasn't all completely fake. I think it's some mix of, of fake and reality, honestly. Again, we're, talk, we're talking about actors here. We're talking about Hollywood. And some people are like, they're not that good of an actor. Will Smith's a pretty good actor, <laughs> right? Chris Rock is, you know, he's a decent actor. They're actors. This is their job, right? You, would want, you wouldn't want somebody to come to your job and be like, oh, I don't think you can do your job. It's like, I've been doing this job for 10 years. Of course I can do my job. Or 20 years. Some of these guys have been acting for 30 years, 40 years. Anyway. But the intersectional nonsense is just, and, and I'll put it in the description, Matt Walsh's video where he talks about intersectionality. It's just because people are, have the glasses of critical theory just securely fastened and like welded to their face that they can't ever get them off. And it's like, this is oppression. Black women are made fun of the most. It's like, no, they're actually not at all. Really at all. I mean, when was the last time? Like pull up another joke. Most of the time it's, you know, black people making fun of white people or white people making, or, you know, Karen is a good example. That's Basically, you know, I use the term loosely, a racist term for a snotty white lady, quote unquote, right? Because you're, you're literally judging somebody based on how they look. That's exactly partiality. And that's racism. R really, the sin is ultimately partiality, not even racism, at least if we're going to talk biblical. Let's go to Proverbs 6. Proverbs 5, 6, and 7 are fantastic passages that really speak about sexual immorality adultery, fornication, everything else. Look at this is how this is how wonderful the Bible is. Go to the ant, O sluggard, lazy person, consider her ways and be wise. Go work. See so look at the ant. Look how hard the ant works. Work like the ant. We still have ants today. We have ants. We've had ants in our kitchen. So annoying. Drop a comment. Have you ever had ants in your kitchen? I don't know. That's just a one way to go, drop a comment. But no, really. Um I hope you found this helpful. If you did, Please tell me. Drop a comment. Tell me where you're from. If you're a new subscriber, I've had quite a few lately. Subscriptioners, as I like to call y'all. Uh, thanks for coming along for the ride. Usually these videos are anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. And we're about there today. Where is what I want? Here it is. My son, keep your father's commandments. Forsake not your mother's teaching. So listen to your father and your mother. Go figure. You need a father and a mother to do that, don't you? Sorry, Dave Rubin. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. Now, this is, again, illustrative language speaking about uh, words from your parents. Keep these close to you. They will guard you, as it were. For the commandment is a light, a teaching, a light, and a reproof, a discipline, a way. To preserve you from the evil woman. Now, again, this isn't because all women are evil. No. It's a delineation between a woman who's godly, who's respecting the Lord's law, and an evil woman. There's plenty of evil women out there. There's plenty of righteous women, too. But that's not the subject, is it? So don't freak out. Don't freak out. If you do, go talk to the Lord. You might not know him. And if you do, here's the thing. You can repent and believe the gospel. You can have your sin washed. You can have, Will Smith could actually be forgiven. Okay, he could actually have new life and he could actually rejoice in the wife of his youth and stop chasing after worldly flesh and all sorts of wicked ideology. Because this is not going to satisfy you. It's clearly not. This guy's millions of dollars and he's pissed about some guy who says, who's a friend, who he's known a long time, who's a comedian at an award show who just made fun of somebody else. 
and other people and then makes fun of other people. Oh, words are violence. This is what they do. Grow a spine, people. What is wrong with you? Grow a spine. Get some skin. We're not in fifth grade. Oh, she made fun of me. Deal with it. But we've had this condition for, you know, however many years now of people who are just constantly, oh, this is, oh, this is wrong. Oh, words are violence. Now, again, Proverbs 12, 6, we saw that words do stir up. Da- words can be harsh like a dagger, stabbing and whatnot. Anyway, this is a bigger, longer episode. Thanks for sticking around. Can a man carry fire in his chest and his clothes not be burned? No. So he who goes into his neighbor's wife, none who touches her will go unpunished. But if he is caught, he will pay sevenfold when he steals, on and on and on and on. You will not go unpunished, Will Smith. And you're obviously doing that now. You're already reaping the nasty, wicked sowing seeds of your, your, the fruit of what you've sown. Repent and believe the gospel. And someone else, if you're watching this, you don't know Christ, or you're not really sure, you think Will Smith is a Christian, or you think this is what Christians do, you're wrong. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus, the real Jesus, the Jesus of Scripture, is so much better than the Jesus of some imagination. I hope you found this helpful. I really do. Um, I do these shows Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, I also do uh, Contra Talk. It's a talk show where I interview different people, and those come out on Saturday. Those are also on Apple Music, Google and Spotify. You just search their Contra Talk, Richard Henry, something like that, and you should find it. So anyway, I hope you, again, enjoyed this, and you're having a great day. And if not, I pray that you have a good day. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Take care. Oh, and be against the world. See ya.